God, I love Courage. His casting is amazing. You have not yet casted a hundred thieves win. Okay. production time on this? Yes. That was an incredible graphic, incredible setup for that joke. Love every bit so of that. Good. Well done on the production side. <laughs> why is why is the whole LCS not like that? Huh? Because nobody else has that kind of reputation. That's a storyline that's built over years. Ah, oh, they're connecting B1. Oh, am I behind? Okay. Talia for Quid is amazing. Not gonna lie. Nah, Talia for Riv. Talia Jace. Ooh, Sniper Jace. That's interesting. By the way, you wanna know why it's easy to walk into uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum? Look at this. At least one is laying in the bed. But not the one of the <laughs> size that you would think dumb. would actually be in there. The other one just decided, nah. The floor sounds great. <laughs> and this just looks like their sleeping room and you have invaded their space, I think. Oh. Oh. Play jungle? Be, this would be so much fun. Oh, this would be so much fun. Aw, oh, boo. Board. Board. Boo. Hmm. Tristana might I actually not be bad. Tristana's good here because you can put it mid as well and take something really spicy bot lane. And then flex the Tulia to jungle. Yeah. Yeah. But then, I don't know. You can't take Tulia jungle here because you don't have like a Renekton or like a free stun mid. Oh my hey, god. Hey! What do you know? Let's see. If this is Karma support. I definitely think you take the Tristana mid and you take like Ezreal. No. Ooh, Karma Leona? Mid. You have so many options now. I mean, I think a Volley Bear slam, yeah. Volley Bear jungle, I take it. What is, is this going to be mid or support? It is Karma oh, mid. Oh, they're lacking damage. I mean, they're just assuming that Tysa will nuke people. I think you go Trist mid. Jace top, Talia, and then put what bot lane? And it's kind of just inting Karthus. It oh, is okay. Talia jungle, yeah, finally! Talia jungle. So Talia jungle, uh, Yone mid. Oh, we got a spicy draft. This is LCK draft. This is LCK. I don't know who I'd rather have mid Jace or Yone. Who's, well, here's my question. Who's better into Renekton? Undoubtedly the Jace, but I think the Karma is the worst matchup. I was going to say, Quid is going to be able to even this out once the wave crashes a little bit. Alright, Sniper. Gotta be able to live here. Gotta be able to live. Ooh, he has Conqueror, not Phase Rush. So he's going full team fight, Jace. Mm -hmm. But that means it's going to be hard for him to live this gank if it happens. River's here. They know it almost feels like. Ooh. Oh my god. Let's go, Sniper. Come on. <laughs> what the fuck? Sniper said, I heard... You were talking shit in Academy. Well, guess what? Too bad. We're on the big stage. <laughs> Let's go. Kill the wave, 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 kill the wave. Kill the wave. Oh my god, B-Boy oh. just dies. When he Sniper. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. What? But no, you know, he can end those in scrims, but on stage, he fucking gets them. With a 14 CS Statement well, came from Sniper. It's a scary place to be in. You know, cast your E early and then flash in for the stun to guarantee that your E will land. Mm. But the damage from the E doesn't land. From the TikTok. That is clean, Sniper. Oh you know my God. This is ridiculous, though. 
Quid is up 20 CS in mid lane, 3 kills top lane, 2.5k gold lead at 8 minutes. Oh my god. And now Boogie is not about to have a good time either. He's immediately going to get locked up. Burst down River taking the kill that No chance. Oh, wait a minute. As Sniper tries to get away and Zazel wants to finish him off. Not good. Not good. As they finally make their way onto the board. But they rotate 5 up there. That. Shutdown goes on to Leona. So, unfortunately, probably the worst champion you can get it on there, but still a nice little turnaround for a moment to at least take down one. All right, but that's fine. You basically get the entire bot lane tower, tower for this. DPS, yeah. they, they did have a good counterplay there, but... Ooh, sniper oh, chain ganking. To take one with them, but freebie one, man. Okay, and, sniper. And what do we? Okay. One place where They're just gonna sit top lane. That's fine. You gotta stay alive. You can't no be chucking this now. Yeah, that's on sniper. And now it's, it's gonna mean gonna we get grub game for Shopify not good. Yeah. Six grubs, not good. Shit. Well. Okay, but Quid's farming like a beast. So He's at 116 CS at 11 minutes. Right. Come on, Sniper. Reel it in. Reel it in. We're fine. Look, we're a rookie squad. We're going to make mistakes like that. That's fine. Bot side of the map is just entirely terrorized. Oh, my God. Yone goes bot. Bro, Courage is the best. It's amazing. It, it really is. Uh, oh, this is a good fight. Yes. Bad ult, but good fight. All right. Weaver's wall flew out. Here comes Yone. Oh, this is not good. Oh. Boogie's dead. Boogie's not dead. Yone's dead. Oh, man. Okay, Tristana got the reset. Tristana's about to get a double here. Sniper just absolutely terrorizing him. Yeah. We just beat him with our wallets. That wasn't the cleanest fight in the world. TP from Quid was a little bit eh. But beyond that, perfectly fine. Yeah. But hey, we still won the fight. Still beat him with our wallets. That's fine. Clean that up come playoffs. Beyond that, we're fine. Late dragon, though. Second dragon's at 16, so we're not even going to get to... Realistically, this game ends before you hit soul. Or, like, you hit soul and you don't... Like, Elder's not even going to be in play. You know, whether it's dead. Oh, he was soloing it and wants the tempo play of pushing lane quicker. Ayla engaging uh, here Ayla? against Shopify. The rest of the team isn't immediately ready, but the blast cone gets Ayla away to safety. Now, oh, Boogie Meech, you okay? Yep, he's fine. Easy. GG. Nice. Meech doing a ton of damage. Is he going to jump under the tower? Is he going to be ballsy? No. No, he's not. Damn. Just grab Baron. Don't even worry about dragons. Just grab Baron and end the game. As we just talked about yesterday, do the G do the G2 thing. Stay calm. Just play as clinical as we can. You know, set up our vision and Hundred Thieves have just continued to do that. End this game here. Okay, little aggro from Ayla. Oh my god. Quid, that was a little aggressive. One does go down for hundred thieves. Little aggressive there, buddy. But it's fine. We get two towers out of it. Okay, flash for flash trade. And we get inhibitor tower. Oh my god, he's low. Sniper. We're just killing everybody. Meech is just dealing damage the entire time. Uh oh, here comes the flank. Oh, bye bye. Good try, Fake. Fake God. Nope. Oh, he still lives somehow. Dude, we are just fighting everywhere. Oh, this is so nice. Yeah, but this is different. This is an 11k gold lead. Like, we're, we're fine. Just end the game. Great jump. I mean, he didn't even have to jump once he dodged that, but he just did it anyways for the buffer. Alright, when are Shopify going to pull the trigger here? 
If you just wait around and you let the Yone split push all the way up to the inhibitor, then, then it gets really difficult. Oh, uh, they do have flashes nice poke. on Boogie and a couple seconds left on Fake Gods. When those two champions have their flashes, it's a completely different team fight. Your flash plus guaranteed point and click stun. Yone back for IE. Oh god, he back for IE. <laughs> oh no. Have one more attempt. Importantly, it was the Infinity Edge just now completed for Quid's Yone. This guy hits like a truck now as the Weaver's Wall comes in and the burst finds Zazel to start. Bye bye. Boogie has to run away from Nothing the they can do. Charge. We're That's just smashing him with our wallets. And another dredge line connects. Insanity's the target. And Meats just barely misses out on the kill. Yep. Shopify running for their lives back into the foul. Not even close. Thieves keep it going. Meech, I think Meech gets pog this game. Even though Sniper like had a good early game, I think Meech actually gets it. Quid was fun gaming this game. Oh my god, Meech. Jesus. Also, shout out to Courage for that callback on the optic, uh, the optic cast there. Yeah, Meech 100% gets Pog there. 100%. Great game. Keeps us tied with FlyQuest for top of the standings. You look great. You're playing great. One question for you. Um, I am free after this. You want to get some duos in? Duos, bro? Nah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay. Another day. Nothing special. Another there. another day. Another dub. Yeah. yeah. That's all the matters. Normal day for us. <laughs> I, I mean, the first thing that I think is on everybody's mind. How's the golf game going? Ah. Uh, um. Honestly, I haven't been able to play much. Like during the splits, it's kind of hard to play. Yeah. But um, off season, that I'll be on the I'll be back on the grind for sure. So well, hopefully, you guys are not in an off season anytime soon. Yeah, uh, I mean, <clears throat> I'm having flashbacks to last year, honestly, so it might be a long year ahead of, uh, again. What, like, okay, what kind of flashbacks? Because I know some people will be like, okay, well, that had a scary ending, but... Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, I mean, obviously the end was not ideal, but... Um, just, I don't know, it's like, it's hard to not feel a bit like the Golden Guardians run, because, like, no one was expecting us to do well. Um, but... From my side, I can tell we obviously have a lot of talent. Like, it's, I had the same feeling last year with GG. So it's like, and then just to see it actually be executed on stage, well, it's like, yeah, I mean, um, it's not as shocking from from my point of view as it might be from the, the outside point of view. Obviously, there's like all the scrim rumors, and, and, and we do struggle in scrims at times for sure. But um, yeah, I can definitely see us going, this, t this type of team can definitely go on a run. I think we do have a little bit of the like, the X factor on this team. Yeah. I think especially our carries. It it feels like if the game ever goes late um and the, the game is kind of even, we will clutch the team fights because I think we just have better uh I just think we have a lot of individual talent and, and generally that shows in the late game team fights. So what thoughts were going through your head after Sniper starts the game 3 0 has those two back to back deaths? Like are <laughs> the does worry creep in or was it a different feeling of you know somebody's there to pick them up yeah i mean to be honest i have a bit of like a coach point of view from it i think if sniper played really well he wouldn't have killed both of them because he would have had prior and he wouldn't have been getting dove <laughs> so he kind of after he had the first kill he kind of messed up uh his lane and then he was in a position to get dove um the, the thing about sniper though that makes him the player that he is is like in those mechanical moments he shines right um and so it's not all that crazy that he was able to outplay that situation uh the deaths that he had mid game i mean it, again it, it's kind of like the mistakes he makes he does make a decent amount and we've talked about them a lot and they're gonna happen on stage in, in his growth um i think with the younger players as well you're you're digesting more information than the veterans because like for the, the older players, everything is more automatic. You know where to set up. You know your job on each round. And Snipe is still kind of learning that. So what happens is you kind of 
think you're thinking about so much that you you make those kind of clumsy mistakes so it's okay that he makes those mistakes we just need to learn from them um but again like just the fact that he's able to show his talent on stage is the main thing for us and then we can keep working on the fundamentals it seems like the the conversation around MVP has slowly been shifting for a long time. People were kind of on like the river hype train inspired as well. As of the last week and a half, there's been a very solid push for Quid to get it. And there's no denying that yeah. he's easily most improved player split over split, possibly in LCS history. I, I can't really think of anybody else in that level. But do you think it is clear cut that he's like, not, not MVP guaranteed, but like, he should be getting votes in the conversation. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, definitely he should be getting votes. Like, Quid, if you look at whole season gameplay, I feel like Quid has had the most really good performances of any individual, um, genuinely. I think, like, JoJo's had flashes of good games, but then he, at the start of the se season, he had some, like, pretty, some pretty bad games as well. I think whole, if you look at the whole year, um, I think Quid should definitely be a contender um and i i think what gen what tends to happen is there's a lot of recency bias with the the mvp votes people typically are like oh this guy played really good in the last three weeks and that's all they can kind of remember um and there are so many people voting that aren't looking like aren't actually doing a lot of research for the whole year so it's not always accurate but um i, I he's getting the recognition he deserves like i do see a lot of people saying quid should be mvp um, and he deserves it for sure. Is Meech not getting enough attention then? Because today, yeah, Meech, another okay. day, like I thought he was player of the game today. I know it still went to sniper yeah. and people are going to focus on the early, the early kills, but like I don't think he was out of position once this entire Meech, game. Meech there. is the, I mean, I call him the silent assassin. Like if you actually look at the numbers, he has the highest DPM in the league of any role by, I think it's a lot, like a lot. Um, Meech has been performing so well, uh, particularly on stage, and he definitely kind of goes under the radar. I think that tends to happen when you have when you have players like River and players like Quid, um, who are like setting up the plays. It's, it can be kind of hard to put the, the spotlight on on players like Meech, but Meech has had an amazing season, and he deserves definitely more recognition than he's getting for sure. So then, going into tomorrow you guys still have a chance at getting first it would require FlyQuest losing obviously to then put you a game ahead assuming uh you win or i think yeah c9 is now two games back so they can't possibly get it. you guys are locked top two is there any team that you want to play more than anybody else in a best of five yeah i mean honestly my mindset is like you have to beat the best teams no matter what so it's like yeah, there are obviously, like, in the first best of fives, there are teams that you, at least, like, we have impressions of what we think are teams that are harder to play against, obviously. But we just have to be able to beat those teams anyway. Like, if we if we genuinely want to go to MSI and have a good shot at MSI, like, we have to be, be able to beat C9 FlyQuest, right? Um, so, from my point of view, it's not... I don't really mind who we verse in the best of five. It's just a really good opportunity to show how good we are. Is there worry, not worry, is there, I guess that would be the word, worry about how things are going to translate into best of fives? Obviously, I know scrims are more games than just like the one that we see on stage, so maybe there's an indication back there. But the biggest conception right now from people is that, oh, they're doing great in regular season, but once it comes to playoffs, that's a whole different animal. There's endurance that comes with it, the time of you know, the drafting and the way it works right now, there's not as much time. You're doing everything on stage. Like everything changes once we get there. Is there any worry around that? Um, I actually think there's pros and cons to both sides. I think actually sometimes what happens, I played a long time. So I had a lot of veteran years under my belt. Uh, actually as a veteran, sometimes when you're like losing or the games are close, you actually get in your own head a bit because you start like thinking back to like, oh fuck, I remember that best of five that we like the vibes were not were off like three years ago. Um, sometimes when you're a rookie and you're kind of just like playing the game and you get like, you get a little bit of momentum, you can just roll over a series. Um, again, if we're facing adversity, we might not be able to keep our composure as good as some other teams. Um, I do think one advantage we have is 
Uh, I think as a team, we're more willing to get creative, particularly in draft, than with how we play than other teams. So um, we're not going to be like pigeonholed into certain drafts in a best of five like some other teams might be. Um, so again, I think there are there's some pros and cons of being a rookie team. Um, and it'll just depend how the, the day goes. Any final words for everybody out there? I've already kept you on for 10 minutes. So, um, I think honestly, just like it feels there, there's so much positive community feedback for 100 Thieves this split. Um, and our players fully deserve it. They work really hard, and I'm glad they're getting the recognition they deserve. And we really appreciate everyone who's, who's giving us a lot of positivity, including yourself. Um, it definitely makes the guys work harder. So, um, yeah, just thank you to everyone. You guys should get recognition as well. I know you're shouting out the players, but you guys have been one of the best coaching staffs, not only to watch in terms of content, but just like, I don't know, the whole season's just been great all around. Yeah. It's been a blast. So appreciate it. Good luck tomorrow. Get some rest. Uh, cool. And eventually, you know, by the end of the year, let's work on that golf swing. It's not, uh, oh, yeah. not worry about it definitely, until November. Definitely, definitely work in progress for sure. <laughs> all right. Take all right, care. See you later.